Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews bringing you the next episode of Review Recall. This will cover a pretty hefty chunk of the albums in January, maybe with a few exceptions that will be pushed into February's Review Recall, but let's not waste any more time, let us just dive right in. I'll be honest here, haven't spent too much time at all listening to FKA Twigs. Heard a bunch of amazing stuff though, and have been told to listen to some of her earlier music, which I'm still yet to do, so this was pretty much my first introduction. And yeah, there's a lot of tasteful genre experimentation here, and it delivers on pretty much all fronts. I don't think I can hold this in the highest of regards, because at the end of the day, there are definitely a few songs on here that weren't all that memorable, but frankly, aside from that, I had a good time with this. So this is the newest project from YouTube Music Reviewer and Melon Destroyer, Punk Revolution Now. Figured I'd give this a shot, and yeah, I thought this was pretty solid actually. Not something I'm too eager to revisit, but I can definitely appreciate what it is with that being some pretty alright industrial techno-electronic, even if I do think the songs featuring the rapper Altfather kinda drag the energy down a bit, especially from Guilty Pleasure Trick to Joker Card Magic. Despite that though, it was pretty solid. You know, Young Boy pretty alright. <sighs> Look, I'm just not a fan of this kind of electronic one DJ kind of albums. They don't work for me. Bonobo's case here does seem to be a little bit different though, as he's a bit more of an organic and atmospheric and eclectic artist. But I only checked this out because some of my creator friends have been really praising this, and eh. Like, it's fine, it's tolerable. There's a few songs that have a decent amount of enjoyable melodies, and of course, I'm gonna love Joji on From You, but eh. I think what keeps this from falling into generic rap territory is Rich Brian's irreplaceable charisma on the mic and frequent switch-ups, but the beats are pretty mid for the most part, and it's just not his best work, but I am hoping that the next full length will be a pretty good return to form. So for those of you who don't know, Moist is actually one of the highest selling bands here in Canada, having several charting singles and multi-platinum selling albums in the mid to late 90s. This is the band's first album of new material in about 8 years, and I'd say it's pretty good. Nice chugging riffs, electrifying percussion, amazing bass work. If you're looking for that old sludgy, muddy grunge industrial sound from the 90s just refurbished for the modern era, I would highly recommend this. So I had a bunch of hype going into this Corday album. I loved the debut of The Lost Boy, just until it got me even more hype. So now, hearing the sophomore release in full, it didn't really live up to expectations. Sure, Corday can still rap and demonstrate such on this album very well, but unlike Lost Boy, the album doesn't really venture anywhere else. Like, sure, it's good, but I would have liked a bit more variety, you know? That's really it. Not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. This is why I love Futuristic. He's not afraid to experiment a little bit in his sound. The guy isn't just a corny YouTube rapper, he's talented. He knows his way around a beat and knows how to craft a catchy song. This isn't my favorite of his more ambitious journeys though, I really like the double album concept I Am and Zachary Lewis format. I personally much prefer the former in that sense, but there was a lot here to love. Weren't as many bangers as I would have liked though, but man, Futuristic deserves more attention. If y'all are curious, I recommend this to you. Give it a shot. So Tanya Tagak is a Canadian indigenous throat singer, and I'm not sure if anyone knows about the whole situation here in Canada when it comes to residential schools and the horrible situation it was. I'm not going to dive too deep into that because I'd just be here all day on a shoehorn topic, but this album is heavily driven by that, and there is just so much push and fire here. It's frankly just a fascinating listen. Her gristly throat singing is downright monstrous yet ethical, and as a result, her natural singing voice almost comes off as bone chilling. There's a terrifying duality in the vocal presence here, all in all just an amazing listen. I wouldn't recommend this to someone just trying to find something new to vibe to, this is an experience, and if you can look past the clear musical idiosyncrasies, you'll find a gorgeous album. 
I will say, NLE Choppa's production has gotten a lot better, but I also think the kind of insane highs are slowly starting to fade away, and now he's just kind of fizzling out into another generic trap artist for me. Nothing crazy good that blew me away, but I think this was still enjoyable enough for me to hold it above his contemporaries. Yeah, I listened to this. And I can basically sum it up to white wall hyperpop with a few electrifying vocal inflections. Well, it's not so bad, he got that right. But it's also not great either. Wow, Jen sure sounds like Alanis Morissette on his album. Which isn't a bad thing, but it's hard not to at least notice. The songs are pretty decent though. You know? This new Earl Sweatshirt album? No, okay, man. No, that's no. Even for you. Don't do it. No. I thought this new Earl Sweatshirt album was pretty sick. Damn it! This was awesome. Certainly the most I've enjoyed Gunna's music to date, but man, this was just in one ear and out the other. Like, not even just bad anymore, but... Wow, extremely boring. I don't understand why this album is getting flack as boring and unadventurous, since I personally think this was a great record, certainly better than Afraid of Heights. I love that the band is expanding stylistically, and Ben's vocals still sound extremely lively. I mean, I just thought this was a great album. You know, eh. Like, it's not bad at all, certainly one of my favorite things in this poppy side of trap, although I do think the people trying to label this as pop punk or pop rock are delusional. Just because a rapper features Travis Barker and has slightly more organic instrumentation does not make a pop punk album. Admittedly, I like those aspects, and there's certainly a beacon on this album, but aside from that, this is just alright. This is not a giant album. It's an AOR album veneered with Kent Healy, which, at least to me, isn't a bad thing. As I stated before, this man has one of the strongest and most grand set of pipes working today. And he shines over this record, but it's not a giant album. God, I am falling more and more in love with this group of underground hip-hop artists with each passing release, and this latest one from JR and King James is no exception. Razor-tight flows, firm rhyme schemes, and I love the meteorology through line with each track representing a different type of weather. Really good stuff here. Check it out. Wow. Like, this was honestly amazing. This power, the emotional brevity, the artsy and colorful instrumental moments, a beautiful dichotomy of genres I never would have expected to go together. Certainly, this is an early frontrunner for Album of the Year. I have very mixed feelings about this one. Look, I wasn't sure how to feel about this album going in. I've heard a bunch of people call it a snooze fest. I heard a bunch of people praising it for its cohesion and as a fantastic follow-up to After Hours. I personally sit right in the middle, but frankly I do like a lot of the songs on here more than most people do. I like the retro tinge direction for a lot of these songs, plus the songs like Less Than Zero, Sacrifice, and Best Friends are major highlights, but there are definitely some clunkers on here like Gasoline, which was the biggest disappointment for me. That one hurt a lot. But I did enjoy a bulk of this album, even if it didn't have the instantly sticky appeal that After Hours Shining Moments had. This album is pretty bleak. Like, really bleak. Brutal truths about mortality are sprinkled throughout this album, sung by a guy on his 25th studio album. Like, this guy's lived a lot of life, seen a lot of shit, and as a result, it's kind of hard not to feel for him a little bit. Yeah, I can get behind this. Easily an improvement on all fronts from the standard edition. It's almost like he watched my review of that album and tweaked it to my liking. Which I doubt he specifically did, but you know, I like to hope so. Okay, I'll be honest here, I didn't hate Skillet's 2016 album Unleashed, and I thought there were some songs from 2019's Victorious that were alright, but this is the first time listening to Skillet that I understand why they're getting crucified by literally everybody. 
Another year, another new Chris Webby compilation album, and another amazing addition to this Wednesday series. If there's something I can always look forward to at the end of every year, it's Chris Webby dropping another good album. You know, as much as this was a very uninteresting album, there's a cozy, folky charm here that prevents me from outright rejecting this. It's comfortable, it's easy listening, it's a very pleasing record, and I think that's a lot more than I expected, so I'll take it. I cannot believe how long this album felt. Like, this dragged hard. Even for an already long 18-track album, this dragged hard. And that sucks too, because I still see a lot of promise in Token, but man, kind of just a dull record. Which is such a shame, especially since I think there are some very well-done songs on here. Like, the song with Jid I thought was pretty good. Chit Chat is probably one of the hardest bangers here. But man, not really much else stuck out. Not even bad, just kind of dull. Alrighty, folks, and that is going to close it for this episode of Review Recall. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to follow me on all my social medias down there in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!